Vinci of the custom bike world. He is none other than a man who in another time would have been a superhero. They would have written comic books about him. He has a legendary beard and a beautiful smile. Give it up for the one, the only, Chad Pearson! What's up, man? What's going on, Pat? Nothing much. Come on, have a seat, brother. Awesome beard, man. Thanks, I try. Awesome beard. Golly. I'm trying, you know, but... Yeah, you gotta let her go here, I got you know? such a good-looking face, I hate to yeah. cover it up, you know? This, I mean, yeah, I I'm get, the other way around. I get, well, I figured most guys are. <laughs> uh, no, I was just kidding, man. Chad, uh, you and I don't really know each other, so this will be good. This is a good opportunity for me to get to know you as long as everybody else. Um, uh, you're from this area? Uh, I grew up in northern Minnesota. Okay. And moved down here about 10 years ago. All right, so you're a, you're a local cat. That's cool. Now, Chad, I start every interview off the same uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I'm not very bright, so it, it lets me get going. But the other reason is I think it's important for people to realize that guys that uh, build custom motorcycles just don't pop out of the womb doing that. No. Uh, I mean, because otherwise your mom would never speak to you again if you had a frame and a set of wheels and stuff. So. That would be the way to go. When did you fall in love with motorcycles? How old were you? What, when, did that, when did that happen for you? Uh, I grew up racing uh, snow and bills, and then got into racing dirt cross, okay. and then uh, built snowboards and skateboards growing up. Yeah. I had two businesses there. I broke so many bones racing <laughs> that I had to get onto the street. Yeah. And I couldn't find a bike, so I built one. Very good. What was the first bike? Uh, first one is a 250 rear tire using an Ultima motor. All right. Chopper, built so, the frame, the front so end. So the first bike that you decided to hit the street on, you built from scratch. Yeah. And yep. uh, so you didn't see anything out there that anybody was selling. It no. could, it could not, it, not even close. <laughs> How long ago was that, Chad? Nine years ago I started. Nine years ago. Okay. So right here in Minneapolis. Yep. All right. And uh, that bike, do you still have it? No, I sold it, uh, unfortunately. Well it, well, it probably helped at the time, I'm sure. Now. Uh, what bike do you have here in the show with us? Here this weekend, I brought my 57 Panhead. Okay. And that's all built from the frame up, front end, everything's all one off. So you do all the fab work and everything. Now, you've got a shop, nine years ago, you decided to start building. What were you doing before that? Did you go to school for motorcycle mechanic? I mean, how did, how did all that evolve in your life? I'd still be in high school, honestly, if it wasn't for the machining class. Oh, really? So, <laughs> I'm a third generation machinist. Okay. So I made through high school that way, went into college. And I graduated when I was 19 and had a full-time job for 10 years running a machine shop in Minneapolis. Oh, very cool, very cool. And I started my own business and just moved in and that took over. And All right, so you started own your, own machine, your own machining business. Yep. All right, and then it, it kind of let you get into doing the motorcycle stuff. Started a bike company, but I couldn't just buy parts, so I had to buy my lathes and CNC lathes and oh, yeah. buy everything. Oh. And now I own a machine shop. Uh, bike company, so it allows me to build whatever so you build, I want. You build motorcycles, not bikes, and parts, and, bi and, and parts. parts, and parts. Yep. So you got a parts line now. Yep. Are those? Is that parts line carried out any place? No, I do it myself. A lot okay. of my machining goes into other companies. I got oh. a lot of big other companies that I machine their parts oh, for. Oh, the shell remain unnamed so. because they do it themselves. Yep. Yeah. And then they have got me in the little garage making the parts. Making the parts, so. yeah. So you're like a little Chinese kid, basically. Kind of, but in making the U.S. Some, yeah, yeah, but in the U.S. Well, China boy, you know. A little sweat shop yeah. action right here in <laughs> Minneapolis. Uh, well, that's cool. You don't get to sweat much in Minneapolis. Usually just shivering. Yeah, stuff. usually. So, you know, this place is warmer than where these cats are from. Those, uh, those wash knocks, yeah. they're from South Dakota. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, nice there. 70 degrees there this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you uh, get done machining, you, you get that business. Your shop now, do you, is it a full service shop? Do you do the, the oil changes and the repairs and all that? Or are you just a one-off custom shop? Just a one-off custom. I don't do any repairs, no right. maintenance, no nothing. No, no. I got other guys that do that. That's their business. All right, so that's separate and yep. you just let them handle that? I just make yours? parts for other people and build one-off things. All right, so uh, now you built that first bike and, and sold it. Now, the way it works for most of us, you know, we build something, either whatever, a hot rod or a motorcycle, and then we got to sell it so we can get some more money to, for the next project. That's the way a lot of us have to yeah. do it. Now, uh, what is your personal bike that you're riding? Now? My personal bike is my Panhead. 
the pan head yeah, that you have here. That I have. That I have here in that Minneapolis. Is my daily rider, my everyday bike. All right, man, that's pretty cool. I, man, I remember mine. I wish I had it back. That's the bike I wish I had back. Yeah. <laughs> they never go out of style. The 250 choppers, you know, those go in and out of in style. And out and but uh, the pan head never yeah. goes out. Doesn't matter what you do with them. That holds its value too. So. Yeah. <laughs> now, does what's the name of your shop? Pearson Customs. Pearson Customs, and your website is PearsonCustoms.com. PearsonCustoms.com. That's easier. Also on uh, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere else. All right, social media and the web. Hit them up, PearsonCustoms.com, and then you can see how to keep up with them on all those other, other places that our computers and our phones let us go to. Now, uh, how many employees are at your shop? Me, myself, and I. That's awesome. So you have three guys, yep. all on one health insurance policy. Boss is not always the nice. He, I bet, yeah. So uh, daily beatings. Yeah. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you married? Yes. How long have you been working at that? Uh, going on three years now. Three years? Yeah. All right. How long have you been married? Yeah, going on three years. Oh, three years. So you've been working, working at it the whole it. time. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I've been married for six years, and my wife says that she doesn't think I've been working on it that long. So, uh, yeah, so, but I, I work on it from time to time. Now, when you uh, get ready to, to build a bike, how does that process work for you, Chad? Do you, do you uh, pull inspiration from other places? Uh, you know, how do you start to conceive of it? I talked to a guy um, in Dallas, Tommy Moore, Moore's Customs, yep. out of Kansas City, and he gets a piece of butcher paper and sketches a life-size thing. How do you go about it? It depends. If the bike's for me, I already have the image in my head of what I want, so I just go off of that. But if it's for a customer, I have them bring in photos, sections okay. of the bike, what he likes, what he doesn't like, and then I get the image in my head. And then I'll do a little sketch so I, he understands that where we're at, and then I'll just build it. All right, but cool. So you give him a little sketch. Yeah, kind now, of. But not, like, not a rendering. Oh, I can't draw. Okay, you're not Stick chick figures, chop. Stick figure, know? okay, yeah. so just kind of a rendering. That's cool. The pictures help a lot with that. Pictures, I know. yeah. I, I use that too, just to kind of. So we, we know at the end yep. that final check isn't delayed for some other yeah. reason you know, that we, we didn't realize up front. Now, uh, how many bikes are you, uh, are you getting out a year? Usually somewhere around one bike a year. One bike a year. I don't really do a lot of bikes. I've probably done eight or nine full customs. Right. But I don't, that's, there's so many people doing it that I'll do a frame and I'll sell 20 frames a year. Uh -huh. My big thing is Springer front ends. Okay, I so got you're two making... different style Springers that I sell oh, all right. and I do about 20 to 30 of those a year. Oh man, so that's, that's my incredible. big thing, and then machining. All right, well that's that's great. You know, and that's uh, a good friend of mine, Pat Patterson at Lead yep, Sled. Lead Sled. Yeah. Good friend of mine. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he's he does the same thing. You know, I mean, he's the parts are really what can keep a shop alive. And I, you know, for builders that that are that are out there listening to this, you know, you, you can't preach that enough to your buddies. You know, you gotta figure out how to make parts. Uh, because you're going to sell more parts and than you are bikes. bikes. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, you don't go into this to make, it's almost impossible on a custom bike to make money. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I mean, by the time you get done. The hours will eat you alive and you're not getting paid for it. Yeah, you know, even if because those guys that even paint them themselves and do all, everything from soup to nut, even those guys that aren't paying other people doing it, it's still the labor and time of doing it. So, you know, there's just, it's very difficult to do that. It's the love of building the bikes for me. Absolutely. I'll lose on it, I'll just, you know, yeah. Eat that, but it's a love of coming out at the end and being like, damn, I just built that. Yeah. And then see the guy ride away and he's happy and that's, oh, that's what awesome. makes it. You know, I, I mentioned that a couple of times uh, a year doing these interviews. That really is, for, for the builder, it is the process of doing it. But you know, there's a whole nother extension of joy for the guy that can get in there and go show off this creation. He gets that same, same, same kind right. of feeling yep. about it. So that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. So I, uh, now, are you doing any, I know that you're here in the JMP Ultimate Builder Custom Bike Show for Progressive in International Motorcycle Show this weekend in Minneapolis, but are you also in some other shows this year? What are you doing this yeah, year? Yeah, this year I'll be doing the Donnie Smith Show coming up here in March. March, big show. Biggest show around here, so yeah. we do that one for sure. I got a booth there. I'll be running out to Milwaukee for Mama Tried. Okay, That's cool. That's going to be a, Right at the end of February. Yep, yeah, awesome show there. Uh -huh. Uh, we'll be going out to Sturgis this year. Right. Now, out do there. you set up as a vendor in Sturgis, or do you, do you go? I used to, but now I find it better that I just go raise hell and go to all the rallies. And, and ride and around on yeah. your stuff and let people ask you. Yeah. some shows, and you yeah. can talk to people that way and not have to 
spend the major money on this. Well, you know, you can always just go visit somebody like Pat Patterson for the afternoon. Yeah, exactly. And you can park your bike in his booth, yeah. you know, and people can buy it. But no, that, that's all. Oh, so make him pay for yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. right. Then he uses so, his trailer. Then he uses his trailer, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, so you're going to be, if people want to see you in Milwaukee at Mama Tried, you're going to be at the Donnie Smith Show in March, which I have not been to that show. I'm down in Atlanta. Oh. And man, March, you know, that gets into rally season. So yeah, that's where we get to a really busy tough season. Month. But uh, I want to get up for that. I am going to try to, maybe I'll see it, Mama Tried. I want to get up for that. That's, that's, a, that's a cool that's show. That's going to be great. Yeah, that's that's going to be off the, off the hook. It can be cold in Milwaukee in the end of February. Sure, though, it can so. be. Yeah, so. Cold I'm, outside here now, too. I know. So it's, for me, <laughs> riding up from Georgia, you know, at the end of February, it'll be 80 degrees. All of a sudden, I get halfway there and I'm frozen, you know. And I'm what? like, this was a bad idea. That's yeah. why you got five ball leather to get you Five some ball leather. leather. I'd have one of their Ike jackets. There That's you really go. nice. So I might have to talk to them about getting me uh, some pants and some gloves <laughs> and some doors and a windshield. And, oh, come on. No, no. no. <laughs> so now I, I did go over to see Jeff Boaz at Venture Heated Clothing. That's some cool stuff. It yeah, goes right yeah. under your leather. Plug it right oh, in. Oh, yeah. It's nice. You should be sweating. So, well, man, it's exciting to, to hear that you're building stuff, uh, one-off custom stuff. Because, you know, when the craze hit and everybody was kind of doing these production customs and it, it kind of got out of hand. And my fear was, man, when this when the bubble bursts, it's like, man, nobody's ever going to going to get back out there and do and this. And just do it. But uh, you're I doing it. my name off of his quality parts and then... One off thing. That's it, man. Well, I'm I'm so glad that you're doing it, and uh, want to keep supporting you and doing it. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to get out there and take a look at one of your Springer front ends. I got Absolutely. I got a customer's bike in the shop right now, that, uh, looking for something new. So that might oh, just be the there. Thing. We go. I got a ticket. couple versions. Look at that. Look at that. So uh, again, it's uh, what's your website? PearsonCustoms.com, and on Facebook. Chad Pearson or Pearson Customs. All right. So and then you can look up from there. You can check out Instagram and. Yep. He'll twat you or whatever, the tweeter or whatever, <laughs> whatever you is. want. You'll do whatever you need as long as you're paying money right there. So <laughs> I tell you what, big hand for Chad Pearson, American craftsman, uh, building stuff that is uh, is just beautiful. Chad, thanks so much Thank for you, being Pat. at the Progressive International Motorcycle Show. The JMP Cycles Ultimate Builder Show would not be the same without guys like you, particularly your stuff. And uh, the Progressive School of Rock Stage is going to be back in about 20 minutes. We appreciate you sitting and meeting Chad. And uh, when we come back, we're going to have some more uh, live rock and roll for you. So hit us back in about 20